In this video, I'll show you how to use ChatGPT and the Microsoft Power Platform to create an AI-powered recruiter. Hey, it's Wayne from No Code Creative, where we help you grow your business and increase productivity with no and low code. So unless you've been living under a rock recently, you would have heard of ChatGPT. But have you ever wondered if artificial intelligence can help you attract candidates? Well, I've spent a ton of time testing ChatGPT with various prompts, job descriptions, and candidate profiles to try and answer that question. And today I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to generate unique and highly personalized introduction messages whilst increasing your productivity with the Microsoft Power Platform. So if you work for a company that uses Office 365, chances are you'll already have access to the Power Platform and you'll be able to jump straight in and start building applications. If you're new to the Power Platform, there's some really great content out there and some really great channels that helped me when I got started. And I'll be sure to link these in the description and at the end of the video. Uh, so with that said, let's dive straight in to a demonstration. Okay, so we have our Canvas app open here. Um, I've already used Power Automate Desktop to scrape details from LinkedIn and populate them into our data source. And we're now displaying these in our Canvas app. Uh, James has very kindly let me use his profile for this demonstration. And you can see that James has worked on um, front end for websites and web applications. He's got experience with HTML5 and CSS, some back end experience and some areas of interest listed here, such as animation, print design, illustration, photography, etc. So if we click on start here, it's going to navigate to our second screen where we have an input section for a job description. So I've already found one on Indeed that looks like it's a good match for James. So we're going to copy and paste the job description into our Canvas app. And I have found that ChatGPT works better if we input text that doesn't have line spaces. So I'm just going to remove these from the profile and from the job description. So I've clicked go, which has now initiated a Power Automate flow. Within the flow, we are sending the job description and James's profile along with a prompt asking ChatGPT to merge these two pieces of text into an email. So let's see what the response is. Okay, so dear James, my name's Wayne Simpson and I'm the recruitment manager at Hogarth Worldwide. Interesting. Uh, as you have an incredible skill set in web development, I'm so eager to share with you a unique opportunity. Uh, with a world's leading creative content production company, we are proud to make the best work brilliantly. This is achieved through craft, insight, and technology. We're looking for the HTML5 developer to join our dynamic digital advertising team on site with a leading technology and engineering UK client. Uh, you've been using your expertise in front-end UI and back-end database coding to build, maintain, and update dynamic creative ads. On top of this, you'll be able to flex your skills in animation, print design, illustration, photography, video editing, and production. Okay, well, that's quite interesting because we can see in James's profile that he has mentioned front-end and UI, and he's also mentioned back-end databases. And down here in James's interest, we can see he's also mentioned some of his other creative skills which again, it's, uh, it's pulled through to this paragraph. Okay, so your role must require you to be enthusiastic about technology and be consistently looking for the next innovation. You'll need to be flexible and use your communication skills. As well as this, you'll be able to provide production stroke delivery guidance and timings for campaigns and create optimized online media assets. Uh, we groom our employees to reach their highest potential. We offer an environment in which you can develop and learn, always on the hunt for next innovation. We pride ourselves on the value of heart and soul, hands-on, honesty, happy family, and hungry. Okay, interesting. We can see over on the job description here, core values, and it's talking about heart and soul, hands-on, honesty, which you can see it's, it's pulled through here to the emails. So yeah, overall, it's done a good job of summarizing the job description and elements of James's profile and formulating a message that we can then use to contact James with. So, you know, we can copy this into an email client, we could copy it into LinkedIn, and of course we can make edits to that uh, before sending it out. And we can also click the send button here, which would uh, send it directly to James's email. And of course, if we're not happy with the initial response, we can also click go again and ask ChatGPT to generate another response for us. So here we have our next response. Having had a quick scan over it, I can tell it's quite different from the first response. The ChatGPT API has what they are calling a temperature setting. The greater this is, the more creative ChatGPT will be with its responses. So I've turned this up full, which I'll show you a bit later. And this has enabled ChatGPT to create another response for us, which is quite different from the first response. Um, again, it probably would need some editing before we could send it out, but overall, 
uh, a very good base to work from. So let's dive a bit deeper into how I put this all together. So before we jump into Power Automate, let's take a look under the hood of our Canvas app. On our first screen, I've inserted a gallery control, which displays the data stored on our SharePoint list. In order to populate the gallery, we we'll click on our data tab, click add data and search for SharePoint. We'll then click the SharePoint option. And then from here, you can add a new connection or choose an existing connection. Once you've chosen your connection, we just need to click the relevant SharePoint site and select the list that we want to insert and click on connect. Then we just need to insert our gallery control. So I've set a demo page up for this. So if we come to insert vertical gallery, and then we can choose our data source. Now I've also saved a link to our candidates profile picture on our data source. So to display this, we can come to the image control and we can then reference the column where our image link is saved. So in this case, profile picture link, and then we're just using the radius control to give it that nice rounded effect. And you can follow the same process to display any field you like. So back over on our first screen, our second gallery is displaying the candidates profile from our first gallery. So in the items property, we can reference the first gallery, which in this case is called gal candidate, and then use dot selected to reference the selected item. And then within our text label and under the text property, we can type this item dot about to display the information that we need. Our third gallery is also connected to our first gallery again using dot selected, but this time we're using a link to open the candidate's profile directly on LinkedIn. So for this, under the text label and the on selected properties, we're using the launch function followed by this item and then referencing the column where the link is saved. This means that when we click the link, it will open the profile in LinkedIn. And here we can see the about section, which we've already scraped into our SharePoint list with Power Automate Desktop. Next, we have a start button where we're using the navigate function to go to our AI recruiter screen. Here, I've inserted three text input controls. The first to paste the job description, the second to display the profile section, which again, we're referencing the selected item from the gallery on the previous page, and then using dot about to pull that text through. So we have another gallery, which we're using to display the responses from chat GPT. We're using a collection for this gallery and the responses will be displayed in this text input field. We then have a button which I've named Go, which will trigger our Power Automate flow. So we're over in Power Automate. I've inserted a Power App step. This allows us to trigger a flow and send data from our Canvas app. Our next step is to initialize a variable. And under Dynamic Content, we're using Ask in Power Apps. And for this step, we want the recruiter's name, which will be the logged in user over in our Canvas app. So to get the logged in user, over on the on start properties for our canvas app, we are setting a variable called var user and we are using the user function to set this variable. So over on our go button, we then need to run the flow, but first we need to ensure the flow is populated in the canvas app. So to do this, click on the power automate tab and from here you can add a flow or create a flow. In this case, I've already created the flow and I've already added the flow to our app, which means on our go button, I can type in the name of the flow and power apps will pull the relevant function up, which in this case, is dot run. And we can see that Power Apps is already asking for our first step, which in this case is initialize a variable recruiter. So here we can reference the variable that we created in our on start properties, which is var user. And then to get the user's full name, we can simply type dot full name. So back over on Power Automate, we're then inserting another three variables and following the same process to pass the information I need into Power Automate. So in this case, that would be the candidate name, the job spec and about. Over on our Canvas app, we've finished the statement by referencing our gallery. Then we can use dot selected. In this case, we have a column called first name. So next we have our job spec. And for this, we want to reference the text input field, which in this case is txt in job spec dot text. The next field we're looking for is our profile section. So the profile section is being populated into another text input box called txt in about, and then we can close our parenthesis. The reason why I've used text input controls for both the job spec and the profile is because we can then make edits to each of these blocks of text before sending it down to ChatGPT. We also need somewhere to save the response from ChatGPT. So in this case, we're going to use a collection to store our response. So to do this, we need to use the collect function, give our collection a name, 
which in this case is call response, and then close our parentheses. So we're back over in Power Automate, and our next step is to create a prompt to send to ChatGPT. For this, we're using a compose step. Please creatively and completely rewrite mm -hmm. the following job description into a short to medium length friendly, but also exciting summary email to a potential candidate called first name, selling the opportunity. Please word the email so that it is highly relevant to first name's profile, which reads about section, mentioning any areas of interest. The email must briefly mention first name's technical skills extracted from first name's profile as mentioned above. Full job description, please send off the email with my name. So where we have these purple blocks, this is the variables that we created earlier, inserted by using the dynamic content option. Okay, so the next step is to insert another variable where we are taking the outputs from the compose action and consolidating our prompt. So we've then inserted a HTTP step, which is what we're using to connect to the OpenAI API. So to access the API, you will need to sign up for an OpenAI account. Once you've signed up for an OpenAI account, you'll be able to log in, come over to your API keys and create a new secret key. You'll need that API key for the HTTP step. In the HTTP module, we're using POST, we're using the completion to endpoint. The API does require basic authorization. So for this, under content type, we insert the text authorization and the JSON that we are sending is bearer followed by your API key. All of this information is accessible from the API documentation, which you can access via the OpenAI site. Here you'll see what you need to insert for authentication, how to make requests, and be able to review some of the options that are available to you. One of which being temperature, which I mentioned previously. The purpose of this control is to make the output more random. The higher the temperature value, the more random the output is. So back over within our HTTP step, we're formulating the body of our JSON request. For model, we're using text DaVinci 003. Our prompt, we're inserting the variable that we created earlier. Temperature, we are increasing to 0.9 to make it as creative as possible. I've increased our max tokens to 2000. Next, we're inserting another compose action with an expression that will retrieve the text that we are looking for. I will pop the expression in the description. And lastly, we are inserting a respond to power apps or flow step. We're calling it response and we are putting the outputs from our response step. This is effectively how we return the response back to power apps where it will save into the collection that we just created. And you'll be able to cycle through each response, picking the one that interests you most. We do have one last button up here, which is a back button. The on select properties of this back button reset our various controls and also clear our collection. So when we go back to the previous page, the collection will be emptied ready for us to select a new profile and start again. Well, there you have it. This is just one example of what we can do with ChatGPT. And whilst I don't think AI is ready to take your job just yet, with more thought and refinement, there is clearly the potential to create very powerful tools that can aid creativity and maximize productivity. So what do you think? If it hasn't already, can you see ChatGPT becoming part of your daily work life? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If you have, please give it the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for part two where we'll be deep diving into Power Automate Desktop. I'll be showing you how you can scrape data from LinkedIn and populate it into our application, increasing your productivity and saving you a ton of time. See you on the next video.